Welcome to this episode of What a Horse. Yes, sir. We, we cooking now? We're here. But we're going to have a good time. Today. Horse Show Week. <laughs> Horse Show Week. Tonight, they start. Everybody get ready. Trainer Please. Show. Trainer Show starts tonight, 6 o'clock. You know how you tell? People coming in the town. traffic. Yeah. Get in line at a restaurant. Get in line at the food thing. Hey. The, the cotton pig and traffic. All of it's coming. Gas is going up. They know they're in town. Ooh. Tell me about it, big buddy. Keep Tennessee green. Bring plenty of money. We've got a lot to go over. What but, we got? But, but before, well, before we do, we're going to play pay tribute to our sponsors because without them, we could not pay you the big bucks. Absolutely. That's a fact. Let's go. We love them. Let's go to our sponsors right quick. And we'll be right back. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety, and JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Subaru and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. Come one, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or by the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee. You will be satisfied as well. Watch your horses come running when you break out the Feed for All horse feed. Give Feed for All a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 Highway 64 East in Shelbyville, Tennessee and pick up a load of feed today. Joe is ready to load it for you. Uh, feed for All, so good. More of What a Horse coming up. All right, Tommy, we talked about trainer show starting tonight. 19 yes, classes starts at 6 o'clock at the Cal Sonic. Dean Baird, Smokey Cardwell, and Miss Robbie Spiller, my breakfast buddy, will be marking the cards. But, Tommy, you know, everybody, we have several different organizations in yeah. the walking world. And each one of us have exactly what we feel is best. Yeah, of course. And, and we don't always agree. But there's one time we do agree. Right. And I want everybody to know that what a horse, Tommy and I both are proud to be a part of what's Absolutely. coming up. Absolutely. This Misty, is going to be a big deal. It is. Misty Garner benefit to be held at the Breeders. Now listen to this. This was was got put together by Sheba, Tweba, Woe, Pewat, National Walking Horse Association, National uh, Spotted Saddle Horse Association, the trainers, water, the walking horse trainers, the auxiliary, and Sheba. 
I can't. All of what, what, it's the first time I've ever got to seen them agree on anything all together. Hey, That's hey, amazing. I'm, it, it's it's like, a big deal. It's like brothers and sisters. They may fight, but let someone else, one of them get hurt and watch yeah. what, where the oh, rest yeah, of them absolutely. go. Absolutely. And that, it, I'm just wrote right there are the numbers. This is a benefit for Misty Gardner, uh, Dickie's wife. But listen, here's my connection. Misty's mother and I share the same office. Oh, right. Georgia. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's good. well, I'm going to tell you, you can call the breeders. Now, this is on the 25th of March, starts at 6 p.m. You can call the breeders at the 359-1574, Kim Richwine, 317-679-8848, Beth Thomas, 931-580-6825, and DD Sales, 931-580-6647. We will be there all night long, live streaming, doing interviews, and providing an avenue for all of those that are not able to be there. Right. 25th yeah. is, and then 26th, current Mississippi is the next right. night I'm going down there. We're going to stream it the night before. Right. Give everybody opportunity that's not there to go online and, and come up with a way to donate in kind, just that's cash, right. straight and cash. That's how much cash we can raise. Just as much as we can, because yeah. this this is a good benefit. But what really, they would be there for us. I, you They'll, better believe they would. I promise you, they would. It, it, this right here just excites me because it shows the walking horse industry working together. Oh yeah. And for one goal, and and I'm I am make it happen. To be a part of it. Now we're going to talk about something else. We got the show coming up. Everybody yep. knows what that means. We're going to have inspections. We know it's coming. We've already been warned. Marty Irby is letting everybody know that with his help, they've got $3.1 million to inspect a horse. Uh, to me, that's that's just, I, I don't know. What uh, did you expect out of him, him say, uh, no, I didn't help him? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's how he operates. I know oh, how he operates. I know he's like a book. So, I'm going to tell you, though, Tommy, I want everybody to remember they cannot stop you from videoing your inspection. That's the topic, yeah. That's it. And that is your only, that, that's the only defense we got because they're protected. You can't sue them. Mm -hmm. However, and this, this is a biggie here. They're still not above the law. They may think they are. Like I can remember Caesar sending messages that if you don't find that horse out, we're going to do this. There's going to be heck to pay. Well, what she was doing was trying to force Mitchell Butler and them to break the law. Of course. Well, Mitchell wouldn't do it. And finally, Mitchell just resigned. He said, I've had it. They, they come in here. They want you to do this and that. You know it's against the law. You know it's not right. You know it's corrupt. You know it's unethical. They don't care. Well, he finally quit. And I think we had one other one that quit, but Tim is, is doesn't seem to be letting them push him as hard. Tim put, Hatfield? Put, yes, oh, no. and put as much pressure on him. But everybody needs, that is your only defense. Because if they falsify, and we know that they've made horses move we, through video that we had. Yeah. We showed them make, intentionally making horses move by going down into that pocket and hitting them nerves. There's a nerve bundle right there that fares, you know, horses get to the point where they pick a foot up just by squeezing the right there at the cannon. Yes. And that's normal. I, I mean, you, they're supposed to, and they'll hand you your foot and say, so you can punch that little nerve bundle in that pocket right there and make any, you well, make see, a, they're not even supposed to be down in there. They're supposed to be on the outside. Right, you can, they, make, you can but, make a any of them flinch. Well, you can match them all over but if, if, you, if you can't make a move unless you go down in that pocket, you're dishonest, you're unethical, you are a crook. Yep. You're plain and simple. And you can be charged for that. They, I found out, I forget what year it was, but now, you know, a doctor, if a doctor keeps prescribing medicine saying that you're sick and you're not, he can be charged. Oh, yeah. uh, ask half of so, them. Well, they're under the same law. Of course. So they can be charged if they're going in there and intentionally doing it. Like you, you come up with an open lesion mm -hmm. that you can't find. Or I remember the vet that stood there and said that even though it's only two or three cells thick, a fool knows that ain't possible. It's impossible. <laughs> That's right. So the well, post show scar rules one gets me. Oh yeah. So in a five minutes and 12 seconds, that a horse goes in. <laughs> 
he gets yeah, all right. Now he goes in inspecting, and he has no scars. He's fine. He doesn't have an abrasion. Life is good. He shows for five minutes and fifteen seconds. He comes Child out. Con- he comes out. All of a sudden, he has an abrasion. All right. The abrasion has healed. Yep. And now he's formed a scar. That's right. In five minutes and whatever. It, uh, it, it's amazing. It's scientifically impossible. But here, here's the problem. Well, they're smarter than us now. The, the public, the general public, mm-hmm. just does not get it. They, they have a tendency to believe what they hear, not what they see. It's they hear, like, they get the Sarah McLaughlin music and the uh, sick club. There's a lot of money in these humane organizations that lo- they, they suck on that, the heartstrings of people that are innocent, you right. know. Well, I've been every doing puppy a lot is not in the ditch in the wa- in the mud. Right. They're not all there. I've been reading a lot about this, and it yeah. says a medical judgment of a veterinarian shall not be influenced by contracts or agreements made by their association. In other words, all and it ain't got to be written either. That's right. All these all these agreements that they make with a humane society and these people that come into their office and keep putting pressure on them to do it. Those agreements can cause you to go to jail. Mm-hmm. And I, for one, am going to be watching like an eagle. I'm not the only one. I've talked to several people said they're going to be watching. And if they see anything that's out of the ordinary, video don't lie. I mean, if you... You if can't you unring that bell. That's right. If you do it, you're responsible. You made the mistake of doing it. In the state of Tennessee, it's against the law to keep a person from video and inspection of their horse. Well, yeah, they, they tried that with me. Well, I mean, you I can't found out right quick it don't work. It, it's the law. Pat Marsh, Judd Matheny, the Humane Society of Tennessee, Farm Bureau, and everybody in the House voted that we could video those inspections. But you know who needs to know that law more than anybody? They do. The Bedford County Sheriff. Well, that's they, all. They, uh, last they, time they, I they, checked, they, they've got an amazing program for, you know, that's drinkers it. and smokers and all that. Well, they got a program for these people. I'm going to tell you what they'll do. Yeah. The CalSonics inside the city limits. Yeah, of course. So that's the city. But you call the sheriff, you know what he does? Call the city. He calls the chief police, and yeah. they send them out. I know that for a fact. So it, people just remember, protect yourself. It's mm-hmm. your livelihood that you're worried about. They're trying to create a problem that, in my honest opinion, I don't think we have anymore. They come in like gangbusters wanting to find something. They don't come in to inspect. It's kind of like going to the doctor. You go to the doctor and you hope that once you get there that he's not going to find anything wrong. Right. But I grant you, a doctor, whether he's right, wrong, or just making it up. Right. If he says something's wrong, you need this, you're going to believe him. Well, I quit believing these guys when I saw the threatening text messages if they didn't find horses out. I remember one particular horse. You know, everybody knows. One particular horse, they, they eyeballed him quickly and said, hey, this is him, that and the other. And if he get gets him. through, get him. You know, whatever. That's right. So it's, I mean, it's, it's insane. It, it's just, it's not right. They, uh, we even went as far as having outside veterinarians come and inspect. Independent. They could not find anything wrong. Right. But they do this. They walk through, and it's all for intimidation to say, hey, we're here. We're above the law. We're going to do whatever we want to. Well, i got news for them. I've been doing some research myself. They're not above the law. No. By no means they're above the law. No. I, I've always wondered, and even the late Charles Terry and I were big buddies. You know, he was an attorney. I always wondered, and we agreed. We had long conversations about this. Could a VMO be sued uh, privately? Absolutely. I don't, it, it, it's would a private individual. It, it would be hard because it's suing for their job because they, they do have that protection just like this COVID treatment. But you see, if, it, if, if they've done something illegal, they have no protection. None. They Zero. have no protection if they've done something illegal. Now, back up and say this. I hope the show goes wonderful. Oh, I do too. They lead those horses up there. They, the government checks them, everybody gets along, and life is good, we eat food, have a big time, go home Sunday. Now, that's what, I'm, that's what I want. I want that to happen. But you've got to be prepared for you know, they the well, worst. I mean, well, you've got to be prepared there, for the there, worst. There are certain things I want to watch. One is targeting. 
if one person continuously comes up there and every time he comes up there they grab his horse mm -hmm. that's targeting of course if if continuously they will watch one inspector inspect a horse and then check behind him mm -hmm. that's another thing to watch for there's a lot of things you watch for when you go over there because they're going they will come with a pattern they will come with a with a target that they're going to get and you watch them it's against the law to target and if they keep getting the same people over and over again mm -hmm. hey Something ain't right. Now, something's wrong somewhere. They read the paper like everybody else. That's a fact. They, they get on there, and I they'll know. They'll study. They, they'll, they'll watch us, and they'll see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But the way I look at it, Tommy, if you hire outside veterinarians to come in to look at what you've done, and they say, well, we can't find all this stuff that they're saying is wrong. It's just like these veterinarians. These are industry vets. Of course. We have one of the time they inspected all the horses before they went in. And once they went in, they were still finding them out. But the veterinarians, the equine veterinarians that do this for a living yeah. said there wasn't nothing wrong. Well, the big thing is we, we, we're absolutely, we got some of the best vets in the world. Tell me about walking it. Horses. And we have less leg issues than anybody. But you got to think, too. Our vets have to, they're big, they have to do insurance physicals on these expensive horses all the time. They have no room for error. No. They have no room for error. And these other guys that work for the federal government, they're bureaucrats. Yeah. But I mean, what gets me They is, have no consequences. They train our DQPs, and our DQPs do a great job. Yeah. But once the BMOs show up, they continuously say, no, you missed this, you missed this. Man, if they're missing that much, they're failing. You didn't do too good a job of training them. That's right. They're the I ones mean, that you, train them. You, you screwed up. They didn't. You screwed Again. up. Again. Unless you changed. Right. Unless you changed. And that's the major problem. Well, that's the only thing, too, is, you know, if our DQPs are consistent, whether it be uh, Show or Curtis Pittman and his uh, great group of people uh, uh, are inspecting a show, they're going to... I know Curtis and I know mm -hmm. Tim. They're going to, those guys are going to be consistent all the way. They say the, the government may come in and, be, and read a different book every day. Tell you what, I want you to listen to this interview here. All right, let's go. Okay, we got Russ Thompson. Uh oh, here's hey, Russ. Listen to him. Well, I thought we had Russ Thompson. I thought that was. <laughs> it, it's coming. Let me tell you about the video real quick. The video is uh, never before interview, never before questions. He's never been, it's not the bus, motorbike and the horse deal. It's not armed and dangerous. None of that. This is movie stars. Movie stars that he, uh, well, he had his customers. That's right. This Let's is go. a great interview. It, it's it very is funny. fantastic. We are here at Summer Place in Shelbyville, Tennessee. That's Russ Thompson's barn. Used to be just for the summer, now it's year round. But we have Mr. Russ Thomas Thompson with us, and we got uh -oh. Tommy uh -oh. Williams. Out on bail. Yeah, we bailed him out. We bailed him out early this morning. Out on bail. Out on bail. The bondsmen, you know, they work 24/7. I mean, that's a great thing. <laughs> we didn't have to call but one. No. He said, "I know him. We get him." Russ put up the said money. He, said he's on record. Yeah. <laughs> Training show coming up. You got it, buddy. Walk for roses. Tell us, coming tell us up, now, coming tell up. Us. I know last year you won walk, you won it with Walk for Roses. Well, we're headed for this year too, I think. We, uh, we worked on a horse all winter and He's gotten a little tougher and a little better. We Tom, feel, Tommy's been telling we feel like we're ready. Oh, yeah, we're a whole different program. I mean, he doing time walking, all that stuff, and you know, and his, and his what is he, six this year, right? He is six, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so all that goes into winning again. I'll tell you what, when I watched him leave the ring over in Manchester, I thought, I said, whoo, 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 look out, Katie, bar the door, here we come. Really good. He's so, a great horse. He's a great horse. Plum good. Pretty big, too. Have you been no, up close not, to him? Yeah, I have. He's, been, he's a good sized horse. Oh, you know. he, he is. Uh, matter of fact, I got close to him in Manchester when they was bracing that tail. Great. Right. Did I you mean, really? They had 42 people out there bracing his tail. 
We it had to be just right. Hold on, we'll be a second. Go ahead. <laughs> it had to be just right. Well, <laughs> hey, so anyway, watch for us on Walk for Roses at the Stranger Show. Watch make, for it. Make it happen. A simple. He's got him clicking right now. Well, oh, very good. He's excited. He's big and beautiful and whatever. Listen, the interview gets better, as you know. I know. This I is know. not about horses. This is about. This is about horses, but it's about the big stars that he. I mean, this is really good. We're going to commercial. Right, we're going to commercial right now, and then we're going to have the interview of a lifetime. It's Here we go. Funny. <laughs> Jim DeWin started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jim would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaise Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the Amateur Four-Year-Old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both Amateur and Open Show Pleasure Divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both Open and Amateur Divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen Dwin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once and delivered to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. I don't want anybody to forget the winner circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner circle when you're getting your equine needs. It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> All right, now, now th this is your pet peeve here. Love it. <laughs> you the one more. Love do it. That. Watch I, this. I'm about to say, I, I enjoyed it. This is my idea. So if it doesn't, it, well, it's going to go over well. It's not. A, it's about the movie stars and big celebrities that he had out in California. And this is not 25 percent of them. No. I mean, we could go back <laughs> three more times. But this is some of the biggies. I mean, it, 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 this was good. As a matter of fact, I've got people texting me saying. Zsa, Zsa Yeah. I can tell you something about Zsa, Zsa. I mean, one right after another. I got stories. Oh, they have tons of them got stories. Let's, let's watch this. This is really good. Let's watch this interview. 
Tommy, you, you told me that you have some questions that you then, wanted to... That had never been asked. Right. Okay. We oh. talked to Russ about the motorbike and the horse. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. We talked about Russ about armed and dangerous. A thousand times. Okay. What we have never discussed is his Hollywood customers. He's never been interviewed about it. It's not, no, it's not out there. I'll look for it. Here's the first question. When was the first moment Josh Akabor wanted a horse and you met her? It was in 83. We won the celebration with Silver Fox for Neil Devon and Patty Rafferson in 81. And that was my first blue ribbon. And uh, she she had a, a masseuse that come in and done her massage at her home once every two weeks or three weeks. I don't know when it was, right. but it was a, a regular thing. Right. And that masseuse was telling her that she went down and rode a silver horse at my barn that belonged to people that was going to sell it. She said, oh, I'd love to have a gray horse. And she had a little old clip on a flip top phone. And uh, she seen it, and then they, they, it just started. I mean, it just never let up. Cause she so owned she, it. She dials you on the phone. Or shows oh, up. she she shows up at my barn. Yeah. She showed up at my barn. She wanted silver fox, and uh, she uh, she had a little mare that she'd bought at the auction down here at Wiser Farm. And she bought a um, she bought a little stud horse down there, and. Uh, he, he, he didn't pan out too good. And Scott Benham had a little mare and stuff for him. Mm -hmm. And she she was gorgeous, but she wasn't as good as she was pretty. Right. But now she's seen this damn gray horse. Party's on. She yeah. wanted it. My silver fox, she said. <laughs> Brought her to Tennessee. She exhibited him at uh, what then was Old Fort Park, Interna the International in Murfreesboro. Let me ask you she, this. She exhibited him at the celebration, too. Right, exactly. Did she get in performance horses? That was never her thing. Yeah, she had a performance horse. She had a mare, and she named it Darla. And uh, it was a generator mare. And uh, she, she, she loved it. But she was scared to ride that hard, you know? Yeah. She loved sitting on Fox and him doing the business you exactly. know? Oh, yeah. and uh, so that's that was her thing she, she wanted the silver fox now she showed out there all the time right she showed it every show A to Z over Scottsdale and all, all them shows she yeah. showed it was, well, go ahead you, you told us uh, me and some people that are here this morning about when you did uh, This Is Your Life now in this is this is this was a, I liked it. This yeah. was a good story because Russ almost got his moment of notoriety on national TV. What happened? And got it taken away from him. Well, this is it. the the Mark Griffin was hosting uh, This Is Your Life, and uh, he'd asked me to bring Silver Fox up there and said, you know, we'll be, you'll be behind the curtain and this and that, and we'll talk and. And so Murr Griffin, they were doing Ja Ja, This Is Your Life. Yeah. They had uh, Chubb Checker up there, and they had me, and they tried to get the cop that she'd slapped. And <laughs> the chief police. We got a clip about that here. The chief Go police ahead. would come down there and said, you can't do that. He yeah. said, well, they're paying me a lot of money to do this. <laughs> he said, you just can't do it. He yeah. said, you just can't be doing that. And so he got in the car and left. Yeah. And he had his motorcycle outfit on and everything, you know, because he stopped her in a motorcycle. Yeah. And uh, anyway, the chief said, no, we ain't going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I was there, I had Chubby Checker, and, and they had me, and, and I'd led Fox up behind that curtain that comes open. Mm -hmm. And they was uh, telling her, this is a good friend of yours, and he's with you in all the sports that you do and this and that and the other and uh, I think you respect him as one of the great friends of your life and he's just fixing to call my name. Mm -hmm. And old Silver Fox winnied. 
<laughs> just like I have pushed a button on it, you know? <laughs> he said, hey. and she said, oh, that's my Silvery. Russ Thompson was never mentioned. You know? <laughs> I went right out the window, you know? But, uh, they shot that in there. Yeah, they opened the drape, and there it was. She run over there and hugged that horse and stuff, and I just stand there holding like a damn <laughs> stump. Just yeah, I was just a stump, you know. But uh, I mean, she was always a kick. I mean, she she was a she was a kick. We're gonna go on some other people, but let me ask you uh, this. And I thought about this last night, with all the controversy around her and Prince von what was his name? Prince Frederick Frederick von Anhalt. All right, they von had that, that house that you see in. The Candelabra of Liberace, that's actually Zsa Zsa's house. Yes. It's been rusting there a thousand times. All right, with all the controversy around her and them keeping everybody away from her, why was it that you could go see her anytime you wanted to? Well, you know, she, me, me and her had a great relationship. I, mm -hmm. I, I thought a lot of her, and she could be the aggravatingest woman in the world. And and I would think as if you're as a woman, you could get aggravated at her real quick, because she'd let you know quick, boy, mm -hmm. what you should do and shouldn't do, and this and that and the other. But she is opinionated, but she is good to me, yeah. always good to me. And she lived right there at 1001 Bel Air Road, up there behind the gates in Bel Air, and that Howard Hughes mm -hmm. built that house. Really? And then he sold it to Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. And she bought it from Elvis Presley. And 1001. The yellow house. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 1001 right at the top of the hill of Bel Air Road, and you go all the way around it. And it's a full acre. Right really? There. Yeah. And uh, it, it was a beautiful house. When I went up there to talk to her about our training deal and mm -hmm. how it was going to work and all that there because she'd uh, she'd mess around and get short on money once in a while. She had plenty of money, but she'd get short and giving it to you. Right. You know? But she is always good to me. Yeah. But I went up there to talk to her about our training and everything, yeah. and we were sitting in the house, and she turned around to her maid. She said, darling, it's stuffy in here. <laughs> said, uh, raise the walls. She just done her hand like that. and. We're sitting there in the living room, and all three walls went up, <laughs> up, in the, up in the upper upstairs. Yeah. We're sitting out there by the pool, by the garden. Really? Yes, sir. It just all went up, and there we was outside. Point of, uh, of information here is, if you see the movie uh, Candelabra about Little Rocky, Jerry Weintraub, who was also uh, had the pleasure, or his, or his girlfriend came yeah. up the road. Uh, Lease that house. It's the yellow house in Candelabra. That's the house we're talking about. Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to Francesca. Francesca was Conrad Hilton's daughter. Conrad Hilton. With? By Conrad out of Georgia. Uh, by Conrad out of Georgia. <laughs> yeah. So this was, Francesca was Rick Hilton's sister, Paris Hilton's aunt. Rick Hilton? That's, a, yeah, Rick Hilton's the brother. Of Conrad, and then Paris Hilton was the, the niece. But anyway, Francesca's on the Dinah Shore show, and her mother wouldn't let her talk. All she wanted to do was talk about how she should have gone out with one of these cops. And Francesca <laughs> said, Listen, my mother doesn't let me talk. I'm Francesca Hilton. I own so many walking horses, and that's what I, Tennessee walking horses, and that's what I care about. On the exactly dinosaur, that's exactly what she said. That's exactly what she said. Anyway, I just wanted to say in closing that I have five wonderful Tennessee walking horses, and I really do love my mother, despite the fact that she never yeah. lets me say anything. <laughs> well, they say you ride one today, you own one tomorrow. No, yeah. She did. Simple. She did. She was something else. All right, let's go to. She won a class at celebration over there with her horse. Did she really? Yeah. Case of Wall Street. Wall Street. Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. All right, so pleasure horse-wise, help, help me with my memory. I recall, okay, Burt Sugarman was Richard Pryor's manager, okay? Burt Sugarman and Mary, well, they married Mary Hart. Yeah, Mary Hart, that was his wife. What was the con concept? Didn't they fly in on a helicopter or something? What you know, was the story there? Well, they came to my place. They came to my place pretty regular, and Mary Hart came came out there when she was pregnant, too, when she, just before she had a kid. Now, you talking about a pretty woman pregnant. Now, that's a woman right there. <laughs> and Bert Sugarman had her legs insured on that show of hers every night. They had an open dais. Yeah. And she sat there with her legs crossed and off. 
and everybody phone in about they'd watch the show just for her leg. Yeah. She's a beautiful, beautiful woman. And Bert Sugarman, you know, at that time he was real famous for Soul Train. He, right. He's the man put Soul Train together. Yeah. Well, Mary Hart and them wanted some horses up there at that place in Whitefish, Montana. Mm -hmm. So I'd sell them a horse and they'd take it in up there yeah. and they'd never really see it till they got there. Uh -huh. But he called me one day and he said, Russ, I want one. I said, I need two. But I said, I want me a black and white one. And I want it with walking horse. And I said, well, most of them spotted horses. He said, well, it's got to be walking horse papers, because that's what Mary is into. Right. So uh, I, I found him a spotted. And he said, and i got to have me two. One that I ride, I want spotted, but I want to be able to go into uh, the heliport and meet people and greet people when they fly in here. A helicopter bro. Yeah. And I said, that's what I asked him. I said, how the hell I supposed to know if he's a helicopter bro? <laughs> and he said, well, that's up to you. And I went down to... He was trying to teach one to shoot <laughs> off of, and this is helicopter. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got some that you you can shoot off from. Well, you got, better, you better be you off from them if you're going to shoot. I, no, I get, I got <laughs> well, you shoot off one one time. At least. Yeah, but I got some. Well, how can you shoot off of them? Them? Yeah, I took them down to... Uh, right down there at the beach at uh, San Diego. Yeah. And that helicopter, Marine Corps, uh, it's Army, what is it, Pendleton? Yeah, Camp Pendleton, yeah. It's right there. Yeah. And they learned them guys to fly in and land there on the beach and take off. Well, mm -hmm. I talked to them about, what can we do this? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We was down there for about 15 minutes, and they said, now look, y'all been here long enough. I said, well, how the hell do I know this thing is broke? <laughs> you know, 15 minutes. Yeah. I got to fly them all the way to Montana. And uh, so I went to the San Bernardino uh, Police Department. And over there where we, my barn was in Devoe, California, we got the San Andreas Fault over there, and the, they'd fly in with them choppers and check things and fly mm -hmm. out. I talked to them, so that's where I got him one that was really broke. Cause yeah. I'd fly over and that little old pebbles and stuff, and they do they they bang you pretty good. You oh, know. that's fine. You I'm better have them. I know, yeah. Because it, it'll pepper you, boy. You yeah. and horses, some of them won't get out of here. Yeah. But I got him one like that, and I got him another, and we flew it up there. And all I did is fly it up there, and I'd send a just like a repair order on a car. You'd send a bill to him, and he'd just send you a check back. They're great people to work for. Great Chairman people. was very famous. Um, the one I remember, I didn't know about the Soul Trainer, but I knew about uh, Richard Pryor. He was his manager. You know, that was a little tough management. This this is a little comical thing, but this is the gospel truth. Yeah. Mary did her thing on her show every night. And she'd talk and uh, bring you up to par on everything going on in the world. And she had a beautiful set of legs you ever seen on a mm. woman, man. And, they put her, done, redone her, say it, yeah. had a closed in date. They, they had so much mail come in, and they said, look look at all the mail. And all this is about, what the hell did you do with Mary's legs? <laughs> is that right? <laughs> he insured them for a million dollars and put that desk back in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, well, That's a true story. I mean, you can look back into Mary Hart's history and yeah. you'll see it. I think I'm gonna take have Jerry Williams take my horse over to the airport <laughs> yeah. and let him just stand there and let planes come in and land and go out. Then I'll have him plane broke. I, I guess helicopter comes in over there. <laughs> yeah, oh, they come in all the time. Yeah. That, that's another thing. It's 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 a request that I'd never had. Who who Russ? Who do I not know, celebrity wise? That you know, we had every story. I'm, I'm you know I may forget. Who else? I wait. I've. I've worked some horses for a lot of people that uh, in the movie business. Come to my oh, well, okay, okay. Linda, uh, um, Jim Hiding. Yeah, yeah, Jim Hiding. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was. Jim hey, Hiding actually he was a uh, uh, president of the bar association in California. The other one is okay. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. What are, okay, Tommy, you can't say. I know. Okay. Jerry Herman. Jerry Herman. German Herman. His assistant, or th whatever. She works strictly for oh, him. Okay. Sheila Mack Kyle yep. worked for Jerry Herman. And I had her horses. She had horses for years. And he'd come out there and ride with Sheila, but uh, 
Uh, great guy, great, 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 great guy. One of the most Ki kindest man you'll ever meet in your life. Jerry Hill was one of the most famous. Uh, uh, score he did the music, wrote all the music for tons of Broadway. So Hello Dolly was a big one. Hello Dolly was a big one. The, 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 the dark haired girl on Charlie's Angels, I had Farrah Fawcett out there and she, she rode and she, she's a kick. And, a uh, very good horse lady, and then I had uh, I had Linda Evans out there, but Ooh. I had had uh, the how other I, one. What was, it, what was the other one's name? The dark-haired lady. How did I miss that day? I'm, what was I'm her sorry. name? Um, I, I know exactly. I can see I her. I know exactly. I can see her. I can see her, but I, I uh, cannot name her. And she's as kind, nice. Had two kids, and they rode out there at the barn, and they uh, they did good, and they were just good of people you ever want to meet. I'll think of her name in a minute. Jerry Weintraub, let me go with something that, that I got an email from. Okay, Jerry Weintraub married Jane Morgan. Well, Jerry was slick. He, he was a walking up guy. <laughs> he had a wife and a girlfriend, and they all got along. They all got along? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'd be, stand, they'd be sitting yeah. right here like us and eating in the same kitchen. Eat lunch together. They, yeah. were, they were not Southern women. Well, they right. But he was Southern gal ain't going to. Jerry Weintraub right. was slick. He owned uh, Weintraub Entertainment. He was he took he was the first one to take Elvis on the road. He took Frank Sinatra on the road out of retirement. He was the manager for uh, John Denver, all this stuff. So he was their manager. So he marries Jane Morgan. Well, they're doing the movie Nashville. Okay. So he meets this girl, uh, you know, in Nashville, whatever, doing the movie Nashville. So I get a, I type her in because Jerry in the movie, my way or his way or whatever, the documentary Jerry Weintraub says, I met her up, I went and saw her up at the Question Center and the first place I kissed her was at the Question Center. So I talked to her and said, by the way, what was the Question Center? She said, now this is the family that owned Lassie. Her mom yeah. owned Lassie, her dad was a stunt guy. So Susie, I can, well, she went wine shop, Susie, I forgot her name. So she, she sent me an email back. She says, oh, that was over at Russ Thompson's <laughs> That was in Devoli, California. <laughs> I said, where was the question center? She said, Jerry didn't know what, uh, they were all question center. He said, but I kissed the guy up at, uh, at Russ's barn. It's a question to <laughs> Work it in, work it in. Oh, I can just like, geez. But it, it's, it's been a, it's been a, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I can't believe people paid me to have as much fun as I've had in my life. The last time in the country, high school <laughs> dropout, country <laughs> zone. Two yoke egg man. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> Listen. But, hello, darling. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's his phone. You call Russ Thompson. The, la you get the, hello, the darling. last one's a funny Conway, story. I'm way 20. He's my money. You ain't, okay, you haven't done horses with this guy yet. You haven't done horses with this guy yet. But they're inquiring. But the, 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 the trip when. Uh, Luke Bryan came out to California. Yeah. Luke Bryan. So Trevor Brewer works, uh, he's a walking horse guy. Work, he's a walking horse guy. Rides an armed dangerous horse. You ride an armed dangerous horse, <laughs> exactly right. So Trevor, so Susie, Susie Brassie wants to go see, he's coming to California. Coming out here to the Glen Helen Glen, Hel Glen Helen Amphitheater. Amphitheater. Largest open air theater in the United States. So Russ called and saying, Can we get it? Get it? I said, I don't know. Call Trevor. Walking horse guy now. He's walking horse guy's talking. Tell him what happened. So you chase him down there at a hotel. No, no, when I called Trevor, Trevor said, uh, Well, all I can tell you is, is he's he's there now. I mm -hmm. talked to him last night. Mm -hmm. He's there. He said so. Luke, this is Luke Bryan. Yeah. He said so early, early in the morning. Said, uh, go over there. Said, because he's going to get on his bike and go bike riding every morning. He's going bike riding. Said, go over, holler at him. And said, when you, when you hook up with him, said, just to break ice with him so he knows who he, he's talking to somebody he knows. Said, uh, tell him Trevor Brewer said, his kid, his boys like Trevor better than he does you. Listen, Trevor's from Screamer, Tennessee. <laughs> and and that, this is so this I, is I ride over. I got a picture of it in my phone right now. Yeah. 
But Luke's got his helmet on, he's on his bike, and I see him come out of there with them blue stretchy little things with his shorts and shirts. And here he come out of there on his bike, and he stopped down there at the stop sign. I pulled up beside him and let the window down on my truck. I said, uh, Trevor Brewer said that your kids, your boys like him better than they do you. He said, how in the hell am I 2,000 miles away on somebody talking about Trevor Brewer? <laughs> <laughs> that was a classic. He talked he talk to them deer hunting. He talked about, the, well, he adopted them because they were sisters. Yeah, they was, he was teaching them to bow hunt. Yeah. He? And uh, he said, you know, he's teaching them to bow hunt. They think a lot more of him than they do me right now. I can tell you that. So they, we talked for a minute there, and he said, uh, I said, why don't you come by the barn? He said, where's your barn at? I said, well, you going left here. When you get done, just come back to the right and go up there and turn to the next curve. And yeah. said, you'll come into my barn, you'll run into it. Yeah. Really? Okay. So we uh, we chatted for a minute. And sure enough, here in a little bit, here he come. But he's pushing his bike. He doesn't have a flat tower on his bike. <laughs> <laughs> so he walked. But, but then they went, as soon as he went backstage with him and got the hole. Oh, yeah. We, we, uh, we did it all. I got all the pictures in my phone. I carry with it all the time. Susie, now she she she's she'd kill you over her pictures. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he invited us back, and and uh, and you know every time he come out there from then on, I'd call our friend and uh, uh, Nick, and Nick had uh, set us up to go in there and. Which they That's went backstage. Rose Manor. Wasn't he a road manager or something? No, Nick Nick Masters. He's, oh, Nick Masters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He he put, set us in there every time from then on. <laughs> Alan Jackson, I, I went to him all the time because his guys that hauled all of his equipment. Yeah. He he would call and say, we're going to be in Sacramento. Are you coming? Yeah, we'll be there. So we just go. <laughs> and uh, But it, it's been fun with me, all the movie stars, yeah. the singers, and... Uh, Kid Rock and all, I mean Kid Rock's kicking the butt and yeah. you know and he he don't give a damn <laughs> would you like what he likes or not you know he's, he's goes a good with guy. the flow Jared, Snoop Dogg I, I Snoop Dogg you. live right down the road from him. right yeah, yeah. Dude, coach football yeah. Mm -hmm. You you can go to Russ Thompson's and, and spend a day. Oh, man. And, and just listen to the stories. Those, but those, the big thing about those stories is, we we talk about them among ourselves. Yeah, a bunch of. But the, for, he folks lived need them. To, Yeah, he lived these moments with all these these uh, oh, oh, famous we, people. We got to do a commercial. We got to get this stuff done. We'll be right back after this short pause for our sponsors. <laughs> We are getting ready for show season, but along with show season, we know what that means. Inspections are going to come again. I want everybody to remember, because of Pat Marsh, Judd Matheny, Farm Bureau, and Humane Society of Tennessee, you have the right to video any inspection of your horse or have someone else in, in video it for you. That is the law. So remember that come show season video all inspections of your horses. Till then, we will see you at the first show, which is the trainer's show. Get ready. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again. Just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi-night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much.
It's Jerry Harris and Jim Fuller with the latest in the world of horses, including information and clips from area shows. More of What a Horse coming up. All right. We got just a few more minutes of interview with Russ Thompson. Some say. And then we'll go to horse show. <laughs> Some good stories. <laughs> I'm telling you. Buckle up for these. Here we go. Here's Russ Thompson. <laughs> Love it. I told you this was a good interview. <laughs> this has never been talked about. Well, this is this is one thing that everybody needs to know. Yeah. When you come to Russ Thompson, yeah. Good conversation, and you really never know who's going to walk through never the door. <laughs> I mean, no. you may look up and see. Elvis Presley walks through that door. Well, if he does, it's decided. No. <laughs> it, it's it's, it's decided. Russ, know, it's been good. It's been a great interview. You know, my, 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 my stepdad, he worked at a, chop, chop, a cotton gin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to tell him how most everybody, we loved Elvis Presley. He's the king, king of all kings on singing. And... Uh, my my hero Con, is Conway Twitty, mm -hmm. and he tried to chase Elvis down, couldn't do it worth a damn. Mm -hmm. He went country and went straight to the top. Mm -hmm. But Elvis, my dad always say, uh, "My boy was always crazy." I said, "What do you mean he's crazy?" He said, "Son, he worked at the cotton gin as a young boy, and said he swept the floors." Said he'd come in there after school and stuff, mm -hmm. and they put him sweeping the floor and stuff, mm -hmm. and said. <laughs> And he'd swear this is the truth. He said he'd be sweeping the floor if it was a push broom or a regular broom. He said most of them back in the days had a regular broom, just made it a little wider to sweep mm -hmm. the floor. Said he'd be sweeping that floor and said he'd grab that broom and <laughs> he said and boss said, Quit that acting a fool and sweep that floor. <laughs> <laughs> said, but he'd do it all the time. It was just part of him. He couldn't help it. He yeah. said he, he heard something other run a, 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 a bird yeah. that was, made the wrong tune that run through his head. He grabbed that broom and here he go. <laughs> well, at least he got practice for well, one. Yeah. yeah. What, what know, was it they called him? Uh, Elvis, Elvis, Elvis the Pelvis Elvis yeah, Swivel. Said, said he did that too much gyration. <laughs> gyration. <laughs> Russ, you I know, really appreciate We appreciate it, man. Great interview. <laughs> Listen, we the stories. I'll I, tell you I, something. I told you that's what we need to do. I wanted to tell you one other thing. Go. Is Zsa Zsa. Yeah. She's coming up for a big interview with Larry King and stuff on uh, Larry King Live. Yeah. And I told her, I said, Zsa Zsa, now, she said, I'm going to tell him about my silver. He said, I love him, and I'm going to tell him. He said, I'm going to tell him about my darling, too. And that was right in the midst of when they was talking about the 10-ounce chain and reducing it right. and this and that. Yeah. And I said, they're going to hit you up for this. Now, you got you got to prepare because they're going to question you. Mm -hmm. You can get ready. Mm -hmm. She said, I'll handle it, darling. I'll handle it. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, nah, you ain't ready for some of the questions now. Nah, I yeah. think you should let's sit down and talk at lunch. Yeah. She said, darling, when the, when the camera's on me, I make love to it. <laughs> she said, no, nah, that's just the way it is with me. She said, I love the business I'm in. Yeah. I said, well, I know it, but now there's some questions that could come up. Right. She said, I am. And, you know, she just wouldn't talk about it. And, Boy, and I told Susie and everybody, I said, well, Zsa's on Larry King doing it, and said, we're going to watch it live tonight because they, they got a way that Francesca could go see it as it was happening, you know. Right. And uh, I thought, well, we better look at this here because it's going to be a mess live <laughs> yeah. today. Yeah. And uh, so he talked to her about her horses, and you love your horses. Do you are just a, just a pleasure? Oh, no, I show. I like the show. Said, I showing is exciting. And said, You just ride the one that's flat. He don't do no exaggeration. No, no, my darling is steps high and does everything. She's beautiful, white mane and tail. She just went on and on. Yeah. And uh, he said, Well, you know, there's a big thing out there now that they can wire up to a 10 ounce chain. And he said it like it was just awful, like it was the heaviest <laughs> thing you ever could pick up, yeah. you know? And she said, darling, I've been married to seven guys. I've dated hundreds. And said, if any of them gave me a chain, 
gold chain that I wore on my wrist, my ankle, my knee, or uh, my earlobe. And it weighed less than 10 ounces. I throw it at him. <laughs> End of conversation. They never said another word. I swear, that's, that's on Larry King, Larry King line. <laughs> and uh, I thought, by God, she said she's going to handle that. And she she handled it. And it just handled it. <laughs> Never said no more. <laughs> She's a mess. Loved animals, loved horses. Tennessee walking horses was the love of her life. Uh, Francesca Hilton, love of her life. Oh, yeah. I mean, they... they you she, still had a whole one. Francesca yeah. died. You still had horses for I her. did. I've got the box of suckers, sea suckers. She knew my kids loved them sea suckers, and I loved the butterscotch sea suckers. Mm -hmm. She sent them a box of sea suckers. FedEx come in the day after that I'd heard she died Isn't that, that night. Right. That box come in for Jamie's kids, Yeah. and the box came in for Russ Thompson. I still have those boxes. The labels is on them, the dates on them. I've kept them all this time, because Francesca was Zsa was had a special place in my heart, yeah. and Francesca had a special place in all of our hearts. She's, right. a, she's a good a woman, oh, yeah. as you could put up with. She's a good soul, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she didn't give a damn what anybody thought or looked at. Yeah. And everybody in it, Beverly Hills, yeah. loves Francesca. Oh, yeah. I mean, she, she they loved her because... You know, I was going to put her on the back burner a lot. A whole lot. That <laughs> Prince now, did, too. Yeah, oh, Prince, Prince Frederick, he's a uh, different. I'll just leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> Russ, we really appreciate you. Everybody knows what we're at Russ Thompson's barn. You can hear that four you beats. Hear you there. They ain't stopped yet. <laughs> they, they don't stop out here. They no. just keep going, keep they, training. They keep going. Jack and Jamie will run over you if you oh, stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they're out there now, so we're going to get some video of them. Good. All right. Russ, we appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, bud. Wait Thank y'all. Hey. Thank y'all. Fantastic. And I like Wasn't what that awesome? Know. Well, I've done through a couple of ways. <laughs> we, we are working, Giles Dunn and I, on a six-ounce chain. Going to be a six-ounce action device. Piece of jury. For the ankle or the wrist. Piece of jury. That'd be That's awesome. It. Gonna be, it's going to be great. But now, Zsa she wouldn't have it. No. <laughs> she just say, Apparently I, not. You say, I don't want no part of that. Apparently give me, not. Give me one that's a little bit bigger. Ooh, I, bless her. I threw Pocahontas on the floor. We'll get her up. Allison Armstrong will be after no, me. No, we'll put another one up there. Oh, well, we got to no, put uh, Pocahontas She'll be in town when you know it. Oh, yeah, she'll be up here showing. Was that not the best? I love that interview. Hey, hey, it, it was great. We, and we didn't even cover 25% of what... Well, I've had, I've, we've interviewed Russ about a bunch of things, but this, this one right here, I'm going to have to say, I enjoyed it because he, he talked about everything. We're headed to the horse show. That's right. Tonight. Starts at 6 o'clock. I'll see you there. Everybody, come on out and have a good time. And Tommy and I will be back next week doing a full report. Have your horse videoed if they inspect it. Victor Passes. That's We're going to sell Victor Passes next we'll week. Be. We're excited about them. Let's go. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high stepping fast walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.